<laughs> okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the February 7th, 2023, uh, special town meeting of the town council and school committee. Um, I would like to call our meeting to order. Um, we are full in attendance. We have Anna Jones, Connor O'Shea, Matthew Boucher, Michael Kane, Kathy Hill, Marilyn Richards, and myself. At this time, I would ask Greg to open up the school committee and- Thank you, Ralph. I'll call the school committee meeting to order. It is 6.01 and um, school committee's in full attendance as well. So I'll pass back to you. Great. Thank you. Um, so with that, I have to make an announcement. This is being recorded by LCAT. Um, is there anyone in the audience recording? There is no one in the audience. So the answer would be no. So at this time, I would ask that uh, we please stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Should we do uh, introductions? I know you did some, but. Yeah, I was thinking that would be the. Get some new folks. That would be great yeah. if you would. You want me to start? So I'm Greg Thompson, chair of the school committee. Antonella Rochella, school committee. Uh, Elizabeth Marcy and Boucher, school committee. <laughs> Can we do the school committee? Dan Blair, assistant superintendent for business. Ann Jones, town council. Connor O'Shea, town council. Matt Boucher, town council. Tom Christensen, Deputy Town Manager. Kim Collins, Finance Director. Or Director of Municipal Finance is your <laughs> official. <Sorry>. Okay. Kelly, <laughs> <laughs> Town Manager. Jeannie Quagletti, Town Clerk and Clerk of the Council. Mike Kane, Town Council. Kathy Hill, Town Council. Marilyn Richards, Vice President of the Town Council. And Ralph Page, President of the Town Council. I'm Gordon Smith, Superintendent of Schools. Sarah? Uh, Sarah Trulio, School Committee. Thank you. Sarah's recovering from foot surgery, so she's moving us via Zoom. Feel better. Thank you. A fancy scooter right here. <laughs> Very fancy. <laughs> okay, the next thing on our agenda is public comments. Um, I don't see anyone in the public to make a comment. Um, do we have anyone on Zoom? No. There is no public comments. Is there any council comments other than welcome? <laughs> Thank you for uh, coming um, per the requirements of the charter. I believe it's section uh, six dash one. We are required um, at the beginning of the budget process to meet with the school committee. Um, I'm gonna ask Mary McNally to give an update on the finance, financial condition of the town. Um, which this is a kickoff to the whole budget cycle this year. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair Person. Um, the town is in very good financial condition, uh, at least in my humble opinion. We have a substantial amount of free cash. Our stabilization account is in good stead. Tim's here and she's gonna elaborate a little bit on some of the particulars if you want dollar figures. Um, you know, the town values, the property values went up approximately 12% over the last fiscal year. Concomitant with that, our tax rate went down $1.09 per thousand, which we were very happy about. We did have over almost three quarters of a million dollars in new growth based on those uh, building permits and the like that are issued constantly by our very busy building department. Uh, our bond rating is double A. Uh, we're in good stead with all of our financial advisors and our budget to date, year to date, is about 4% ahead of schedule with respect to revenues. Um, and in terms of our expenses, um, <laughs> we're, we're a little bit out of balance on expenses, but it won't come as any surprise to anybody, but those are mainly from uh, utility expenses uh, that have just skyrocketed over the last several months of winter in particular. Um, uh, as far as capital projects, we have not yet convened our capital advisory committee for fiscal 24. Various departments have submitted their requests and Tom is the chair this year of the uh, manager's advisory committee. So he's going to meet with various people that are on that subcommittee. 
uh, and vet the projects and prioritize the projects that are submitted by the respective departments. Um, we have bonded several items out of our uh, enterprise funds for water and sewer. As you know, we used all of our ARPA money last year. The town got 4.7 million altogether over two years. The first year there were limitations on the spending that was allowable under that legislation. And it was limited to four major categories, one of which was water and sewer infrastructure. So we did three major projects in town, replacing water mains. Um, the balance of approximately 2.4 million came in in the early part of last fiscal year. And we used all of that to fund approximately 26 capital projects, some of which had been outstanding for a few years and all of which were very necessary in, in our opinion. So uh, having said that, just as an introduction, I, I would like Kim to participate and have you um, let her have the opportunity to <laughs> share the spotlight here by, because she went to the trouble of preparing some of this at my urgent request today. Um, and in light of the fact that she's only been with the town for about two and a half days, um, I'm very pleased with what she was able to put together. And also Don Fonte helped out with the year-to-date revenues and so forth. So Kim, if you want to just elaborate on a couple of the things I said, feel free, the floor is yours. I feel like you pretty much told well, them. Well, I, I have a tendency. <laughs> I'm sorry, I talked too much. Um, you know, I mean, there's not much more that I can add to what she said other than, um, you know, your certified free cash was uh, 6.8 million. You have 4.1 available. Um, your OPEB trust is close to 10 million and your stabilization fund is at close to three and a half million. Um, CPA fund balance is 1.5 million and that's um, broken down into, and clearly I'm new here, so I'm just starting to see um, how you spend your funds, but you've got open space of 67,000, historic resource for 246,000, Affordable housing, 173,000, then there's um, about a million in undesignated funds. Other than that, um, there's not much more that I can add at this time. We, I will add that we have directed the department heads to submit a level services budget for fiscal 24 across the board. But for of obviously that incorporates the concept of the COLA increases that were <coughs> negotiated through the various uh, unions on at least on the town side and, and I'm sure on the school side there are several that have called for those increases. Um, so the budget will go up this year, despite the fact that it's going to be level services because of those. Uh, well, as I said a few minutes ago, the utility costs are going to spike it. We did hire 13 new positions last year. So the, and all of those, well, some of those were for half of the fiscal year, others were postponed indefinitely because there was no place for them to sit in the town hall, um, which is an ongoing burr under the saddles of all of us over there. Um, so there are going to be some spikes in the budget, some well anticipated, others not so much. Um, so I think we're gonna get a little bit of a a little bit of a hiccup when the final budget is presented, but I've done my best to try to uh, inform the council that as it comes due, uh, the, the payday's here. It's not a cliff, but the payday's here. <laughs> <laughs> well, so is that a directive, Mary, that it will all be level services? Is that pretty, That's pretty much consensus with, with the council as well? <laughs> do, and okay. as I said, um, some of these costs are unavoidable because they're contractual requirements right. that we now have. But no, no new FTEs is the strategy this year? I haven't received a request for anybody on the town side to hire any new staff this year, huh. for next year. I mean, we have some vacancies already. Our finance department to Kim's unfortunate uh, <laughs> inheritance is down two people. Um, they're already budgeted uh, and we're gonna continue to budget for them in fiscal 24, because I really don't think we can do without them. Um, but other in other departments, we've had some, as you know, sometimes there'll be a vacancy that's not filled for a month to six weeks, which allows us to save a little money. But I mean, like in Tom's case, Tom came into my department in September um, 
but he had one foot in DPW because for at least a month or six weeks after that, because there was great difficulty finding anybody closely uh, enough to his skill set. Can elaborate. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> really skill to climb. He had a hard time finding somebody in, to fill his position. So that savings exists, and Bruce Fenney, uh, to his credit, is doing what he does every year, and he's scrambling around trying to apply funds and he'll be asking the council for permission to move things from salary lines to to um, utilities for example but so we've everywhere there's a been a patchwork like these two positions I'm talking about in finance I mean they were they're not highly paid positions but altogether it may give us 60 or seventy thousand dollars over a portion of the fiscal year so uh, but there, no new positions have been asked for okay. So uh, I anticipated probably about a 4% level services, and I know that's high in, according, you know, relative to years past, but um, that's an interesting thing. So are we not going to go through the finance oversight process if there's not going to be any additional requests or what's the, what's the, oh, I, it'll still go to finance oversight and yeah. see, um, but again, I think it's more like the last couple of years has been um, more just a review for them. Um, it's gotten better and better. Um, obviously, meeting like this really helps. Um, but it's always good to have another set of eyes looking at everything. Um, again, ultimately, it's our decision uh, what happens. And Are you going to give them that directive, though? No new FTEs to financial oversight and to maintain a certain percentage? Well, they can't increase the budget that I submit. Okay. And they can make recommendations. Yeah. They don't have any authority to do that because they tried to do that last year. And, right. Uh, so, but that's what I'm saying, Mary. If you, if you, if you submit a level of services budget, then what's the, what's the point of financial oversight? I just don't, I don't get, would they caught additional things? So that's the possibility. That, oh, yeah. So it, and why what would make them do that though? But it's just like the council. We have the authority to uh, cut a budget, but we don't have the authority to increase a budget. So are you going to give financial oversight a percentage to work on so that they cut to that percentage or they're just going to have carte blanche to cut? I don't think we can give them a percentage only because well, such as the utilities. I mean, we're talking what a 30, 35, 40% increase in utilities. Uh, I mean, yeah, there's but certain things that you're just not going to be able so to. So level service is going to be at 4%. If we go, yeah. so I'm sorry, that's what I'm saying. This is the council giving directive to, to finance oversight that if you hit 4%, then start cutting? Or or is it up to them to say, I don't know, we want to be 2%, yeah. we'll cut deep? They're going to be looking at level services. So in other words, yeah. I, I, I personally don't know what contractual obligations the school committee had. Um, I know in ours, um, they were pretty consistent. Like I said, it's it's one of those to take an overall approach of it and take a look at it. And obviously, if they see something that really jumps out, they're going to ask questions on it, and they'll ask Mary questions. And um, so, okay. So as far as the school budget goes, I mean, obviously, we know utilities in the town has gone up. Is there anything? I mean, I've seen in the paper. Out of district and all some of the towns I think it was Wilbraham that they've gone crazy do you anticipate anything that's um, way out of whack or uh. <laughs> well if I commit oh. one more comment Gordon sorry sure. um, make many, as many comments as you would like. <laughs> <laughs> um, of course we have a new governor in the Commonwealth and so the budget that I'm talking about, level services, whether it's 4% or 3% or 5 or something, we're not going to know, we're only going to know the operational side. And even that is going to be a guesstimate a little bit in terms of the ultimate tax rate and the Im impact on taxpayers. Because last year, Governor Baker's budget was somewhat delayed, and everyone's anticipating now that with the new administration, it'll be even further delayed in terms of its submission. Typically, the governor's first first crack at it comes out in January, and uh, that's come and gone. So um, we're only going to be able to estimate our operational expenses, but we do firmly believe that the new growth will be substantial again. Um, and I think that from what I've read so far, I think Governor Healy has made it 
um, known that she intends to continue to support a lot of initiatives, certainly in the education field, um, that are that are very important to all of us. So, but we won't. We just won't know those numbers in terms of the final budget until sometime for the year. sources. Right. Yeah. Now, are, are you planning on putting the million dollars or whatever back for capital in the operating budget as we have in the past, but not last year? Well, we there's two schools of thought on that. My left brain argues with my right brain every morning about this, but um, it'll be fun to watch. <laughs> it's outstanding. I bet. <laughs> um, Part of me says, well, we spent so much in the last couple of years and, and we have not completed those projects that maybe we should take a year off. But that's counterbalanced by any project that you defer or at least don't put on your, your long-term strategic plan is probably a mistake. But then I go back to the other side and say, well, then how much are we gonna approve out of this capital advisory committee? And just spoke this morning with Ralph on some benchmarks for that. and. Uh, I think you had said something like 1.2 million, maybe, which doesn't allow for a lot of projects. And I'm trying to balance the interests of time with the capital committee, too. I don't want Tom to convene a meeting of half a dozen people and have them meet a dozen times to vet 100 projects when we know from the jump that we're only going to be able to fund six of them, for example. I'm exaggerating on the numbers, but. Um, so that's a concern of mine because everybody is extremely busy and I know the school department put together your capital plan, which is substantial. Seven million dollars. Yes, I'm, I'm aware of that number. <laughs> well, and so that's why I asked how much we're gonna fund. And you don't see us. But in the operating budget, it's been typically a million, usually about five. Yeah, a million. We'll half for the town. And we'll bond out for. And then bond the rest. But I'm just the not gonna go back in the operating budget because I know we took it out last year. Oh, it will go back in the regular budget. Okay. Last year was an anomaly in that it was all the ARPA. Federal money, yeah. So, um, I'm just hopeful that people will remember that. And everyone tells me I'm kind of naive to think they will, but that was a special effort to emphasize the use of funds in this community. I mean, there was almost $5 million. Neighboring communities got, I mean, Springfield got $127 million. They don't know where to spend it. They've got so much money. Chicopee, Holyoke, the major cities, obviously, got a lot of money. 4.7 million is a lot of money for a small community like this, but it sure went fast. Yeah. And um, But it helped us a great deal last year, and, and I'm up to that we can at least get back on the... <clears throat> I don't want to defer any, any, any capital projects that are needed, because I think that's long-term a mistake. <clears throat> so kind of a hybrid answer, uh, Greg, but best I got for now. So we've had budget discussions and we've identified possible positions that could justify a need for, are we saying that they should not be brought forward or should they be brought forward over and above level services? So I think in the past, um, and I'm going back quite a few years now, um, we had done a basic, like I said, a level services budget, what you have, and then list additional. Um, and so that when the numbers come in and we can take a look and get a more rock solid. <clears throat> yeah, but if the level's at four and we're saying no new FTEs, I just want to know kind of how we're, we're headed. Well, if we're, if we send FTEs to finance oversight, are they not even going to look at it? Or Mary, will you even pass it forward? Because you said the other departments don't have... Yeah, but I think I'm obliged to pass yours forward. Ours forward to them at least. <clears throat> you can do whatever you want to finance oversight, I think, because that's that's their board or their And in my experience, frankly, the oversight hasn't ever seemed to to be primarily focused on cuts. They're more focused on the explanation for the increase. And when it's offered by the respective department head, I think by and large, in my experience anyway, right. they've accepted that explanation as Okay, well, I didn't know that. Well, oh, but they haven't always approved every requested FTE. Um, I know they haven't. In my experience, they have not ever Ross. my budget. The school might be a different. Um, but that's what I'm going to, if they don't have a directive in terms of stay at 4% or stay at 3%, and they don't have a directive to add FTEs or non FTEs, then what is their motivation? What I don't, and that, I think that's something the chair of the council would have to answer because they don't work. For me, I know. They're not a no, I know. 
And they're simply an oversight board. So in other words, they dig into the budget, they dig into the explanations, and then they relay them. Um, it's easier for a group of people instead of our council to meet um, on a weekly basis to try and do that. I mean, I, I went through it and like I said, I, I, I want people to understand numbers inside and out to take a look at it. Um, as far as the FTEs, like I was saying, um, I mean, my thought would be a supplemental budget saying these are positions that we would like to have if there's funding and we can do it, that would be great. And I think that's the best way to go because especially at this time, we don't know what the funding right, is. Right, but can you identify that percentage early on? And because we know it's going to be the cliff, we're going to be at four. Well, I, I'm telling you, the town's going to be at four. Well, it's coming, Ralph. Be ready. Just because of what happened last year, because we took capital out. And if we put the million back in for capital, then with those 13 positions, we'll be at 4% level services. And so if that's the case, and if we're truly not going to add FTEs, I just want to know ahead so of time. If we give the, um, the marching orders to them and say, keep it at 4%, yeah. and you find out that you're at 4.5%, I don't think that's fair. No, I, I, I think level service. But how do they understand the, the needs of the town and the financial um, stability of the town if you as a council who are the legislative body and should know better than anybody, don't give them directive to either be at a percentage or a number of new FTEs or a dollar amount. It's just their what? personal beliefs on what FTEs should be funded or not, which is problematic for us because we don't get a seat at the table in that group. And so, so level services, which we're basically asking, doesn't include additional. And I get that. So if you tell so, level services and we're done, right? Like level services is what it is that we know the dollar amount. We know the percentage increase. We could tell you that pretty close right now. So that's what I'm just saying. So and, I don't yeah, understand why we don't get the directive. Saying, though, but <laughs> if there's additional money in the budget and you have a need for right. additional FTs, wouldn't you like the opportunity? Yeah, but you should be able, can you identify I mean, that before the process starts? I don't think we can because we don't know what the total financial so budget is going Greg, to be. We, we did give that second page, which, which is a supplemental budget, which does, you know, be very transparent. What are our level services after we move up all the bargaining units and contractual obligations? Um, and then we show that picture, but then there was that second page which showed our needs. and. And we will get the chance to to talk about that, just like we did it last night. And, Absolutely. And I know, and I know that's how we do it historically. But my big concern is with this, and I, I don't want to keep using the word. Um, that that four percent right in front of the high school vote is problematic. So, yeah, we're going to come forward with a couple proposals for additional FTEs. But if you all said to us that we're not going to add FTEs this year because we want to pass a high school next year. I'd be all on board with that because I agree with that philosophy. So I'm just asking that we look at this year's process and say, all right, if it's 4% and if it's level services, maybe we don't go to 5% this year because we have this high school vote coming up. That's all I'm saying. So, and my worry is that the finance oversight committee, they don't have that. They, they don't answer to anybody. They answer to you. So my and if you don't give them directive, then whatever they give you, then you all have discussion on it. But if not being in those meetings all those times to understand the depth of the conversation and how do you all make the decision based on what they recommend? That's all. So I understand your thought process um, and I appreciate it. My thought going mm -hmm. forwards is the new high school is completely different than the general operating budget. And the new high school is a vote of the citizens for a debt exclusion to build a new high school. We still have to operate the town. You still need money. You still need the increases. Um, we, we have to deal with this separately. Do we all know that that vote's coming up in November? Absolutely. Do we wanna do whatever we can to try and make sure that that goes through? I personally do. I mean, and I think that's the best thing, but I also want our town to operate and be able to run sufficiently as we have it now. Right, but because we added 12 or 13 positions last year and we're gonna be at a 4% level services, wouldn't you agree that 4% is a large increase any year? It's one of the larger ones we've ever done. I know it is because we've seen it, right? 3%, two and a half is pretty typical. Four is large. So if we're at four at level already, I'm just making a plea that the, I don't wanna put a taste in the taxpayer's mouth that 
This budget will be bigger by 4%, which is larger already, even if we go level services, and please vote for the high school. I know it's separate, and I understand that, but you know how voters are. When they get their tax bill, they complain. We all do it, right? So this will be, if this year was already a larger increase because we got reassessed. And I know the rate went down, but everybody's taxes went up. And that's all really anybody really cares about is the dollar amount. So that taste is already in their mouth. I would like us to, I'm just putting it out there, it's completely up to yeah. you all, to have a fiscal tightness this year because we're already going to hit a higher increase because of how we budgeted last year in hopes of getting this high school vote passed. So the fiscal I... tightness, I'm sorry, Kathy, I'll no, be only be fine. one second. The, the subliminal message about we didn't I didn't say no new hires because we want the high school to pass, but it was certainly in one's mind as subconscious and your regular consciousness all the time. We didn't apply for or petition. No department asked me for new positions because we got 13 last year and we got 13 last year because the prior two or three years we got zilch because nobody asked for them because we're always trying to maintain a very fiscally prudent and tight budget. The 13 was somewhat of a of a change, but don't forget, uh, I think five or six of them are in the fire department, which are funded by the ambulance uh, revolving fund. So it's not as severe a hit as you might think. And so we're very much aware of the, the looming high school vote. And I don't know of anybody that works in the town that doesn't want with their whole heart and soul for that vote to pass. But as Ralph said, we do have to continue to run the town. We have to be efficient. We have to be prudent. Um, we have to honor our own labor contracts. And some of the, as you well know, better than I perhaps, the third party costs are what kill us. <clears throat> However, we got some good news today. The Scantic Valley Health Trust uh, increases are only 2% this year, and they we thought they were gonna be seven. So that's a significant that's savings. Um, but you've seen the proposals from the departments. How are they coming in? Are they- I haven't seen them yet. Oh, you haven't. Well, Kim and I went over them today, but I mean- They must be in the threes and four, right? For level services? No, most people, well, we didn't even get to that level of analysis. I mean, now this is not an excuse, but- <clears throat> She's been here for a heartbeat. <laughs> That's why I'm asking you. I'm gonna... <laughs> Next meeting, I'm going to her. <laughs> I wait for finance to answer those things. Yeah. And unfortunately, Olga, who is everyone's right hand, mm -hmm. is uh, absent for a few days due to some family issues. So Kim didn't even have her to lean on for this week anyhow. So our budget process is approximately two to three weeks behind but I have every confidence in my department heads that whatever questions we have as we look through it, and we did look through it today and saw two departments that kind of raised an eyebrow that were highlighted by Kim. Uh, and I talked to both department heads and there's a, a very viable explanation. It's software and maintenance costs. And IT's budget went up 50 or 60 or $80,000 or something from, from last year. But these are things they're not, you know, as you know, usually labor is your biggest cost, uh, and but in some instances, it's it's these third party things that we, you know, we're desperately we we think every year about should we get a consultant to figure out how we can save money on our liability insurance, on our health insurance, get out of Scantic Valley if there's an option that's better, but we don't have the money, we don't have the capacity to do it in house, and we don't have the money to hire it out, so. It's, it's always a pull, and uh, I just want to reassure you, if I haven't <clears throat> done a, a good enough job of that yet, um, we're very, very, very concerned about the school getting its, its vote passed by the town passing it, I should say. And um, so even though it's not an articulated message to department heads, don't do this because we want the school to pass, it's in here. And I'm, that was more than a second, Kathy, so I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm timing it. Yeah. <laughs> Kathy, go ahead. Um, Greg, I hear you say you don't want to put a bad taste in uh, the taxpayer's mouth and then have them turn around and go to the, the ballot box angry or upset. So if you feel that way, then why would you submit FTEs to begin with? Because we all don't want to answer it. Well, I just with one FTE specific, um, I think they're both important, but one of them I think is a necessity 
uh, it is due to the aftermath of COVID and the closings and what's happening. It's, uh, it's an SEL teacher for uh, Meadowbrook. We have students that just cannot function in the regular classroom, as you know, and there's more than ever before and they need a safe place teacher they can go to. So when your pair or your teachers in that classroom, they see that child's getting to the point where they can get so frustrated, they can empty out the other students from the classroom. It's best that they're able to have a place for these students to go. And unfortunately, that, that's where we are right now. And I don't think it's gonna change anytime soon because we're seeing that uptick even and we had to you know readdress the preschool and how we have such a great need for more preschool spots right now um, because referrals that are coming through, we had to go to half day programs from the full day program. So that is something that I would almost say is, is, is not a luxury, potentially at least part of it maybe, I mean, if, if teachers retire, we hire younger people, it might cost less, that might help with it, but we would still need the FTE. And um, I just think that, because it's what I do, like for my day job it's and when you have a place and you don't have a place for these students to go because we try to keep them in the least restrictive environment but sometimes you got to catch them before they're having an issue get them out of the space where entire classrooms have to evacuate and and it goes to a library to do it so for me i feel like that's important and and that would be something where i would ask that you know if you want to sit down and talk with you know gordon about it and why and the where i don't check well, i've never that, challenged your rationale yeah, on but that that's right, what right. i think talk about ft like that one i would be like you know maybe we could address yeah. that, that one oh, hold on may, may i just add one element to that um the the fte that uh beth's talking about actually was an fte we had in place and cut two years ago. So we're still recapturing positions that we had um, reduced, uh, not last year, but the prior two. So, I mean, so you're restoring. Right. right. Yeah. So, two. But, Kathy, though, if you said as a council to the Finance Oversight Committee, no new FTEs, or Mary, if you did the same, because I know the budget goes to them from you, or stick to a three and a half percent, then we would follow that because that's your initiative and that's what you're going to pass right but in the great unknown that is the finance oversight committee unless you throw it out there and convince them somehow then it doesn't get added so if somehow they think five percent is good then these are worthwhile positions if nobody's getting new ftes i'm great with that this year because of the school because my number one focus is the school this year i don't really want to hear that but <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I do. So we, if, it, if everybody's going to put in like Beth just described <clears throat> would not be lost on anybody. I don't care what right, town you're right. living in right now. It's in the national news, you know, uh, <laughs> mental health issues from For sure. three years right. old up to 100 years old, all, you know, a, a fallout from COVID. So it's not like you're asking for some creative Lee, uh, labeled position that people are going to say, come on, we know, I mean, who can, who can argue against the dilemma that every school district in America has to wrangle with right now? And, it, and what it does is it gives you, as you know, Kathy, it gives you the potential to possibly keep these students of course. in district right. as opposed to at a district which it's more expensive. As Another expense. Had, right. had uh, referred to at the beginning, next year all districts will be experiencing in Massachusetts anyway a 14% increase right. in out of district tuitions. So that's um, something that in our level services budget we're wrestling with. And but, then the other element that we're wrestling with is um, we know that we have to appropriately staff our preschool and we're running at referrals, which is another. Um, result unfortunately of the pandemic so last year in december we had 21 referrals for new preschool students who possibly could um, be in need of special education services this year in uh, december we had 45. Um, so we know that we just as um, beth had mentioned last night we voted to go from for next year not this year to go from our three full day preschool classrooms so that we have spaces to one full day, three half day classrooms to increase spaces for these uh, incoming students. 
I personally would leave them in and let the finance committee look at that. Mary right. just brought something forward that they learned today. We're we're budgeting, you know, an increase in health for 7% and it's going to come in at two. So there are those wiggle room things. And I know our assessor, Diane Bishop, is going to have new numbers for us as the months evolve here around new growth. So we can't, neither side here can look into that crystal ball now and say, they're hard numbers, so. And I, I guess I guess my issue is though, and I've stated this before, is the finance oversight committee. I know you sit on it, and I know you do hard work on it, and I know you understand the budget because of that, right? And so you have some input on the whole process as it is. But without directive from the council to that committee, we can convince you there's importance to it. But in the end, if it's a lot of more money than we feel comfortable paying or putting in the budget as as a whole. I just think there's a so, disconnect in how that happens. So, you know, from just talking to you, it's quite evident that you're concerned about the school and I'm pretty confident you're only going to put in what you absolutely need this year because you're worried about the school. And because of that, if an FTE is needed because uh, based on that and it, there's no other way, you're going to put it in. Right. We're okay with it. It doesn't mean it should be funded this year. That's what I'm right. saying. And I'm concerned about I'm concerned about level services at four percent and I'm concerned about the additional FTEs that we keep adding every year and our OPEB liability that keeps going up. And a, a, a town can only grow so fast, right? And so maybe we're growing too fast right now. I don't know. Or maybe we could just take this year and slow it down because we're trying to build this biggest thing that we've ever built in East Long Meadow ever. That's all. And I think that's going to be a lot on the school committee and your talks during your budget process. Um, but again, I don't want to, I don't want to take away from if you have a need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have a need. Thank you. I yeah. think we, and, and we appreciate this that. year. Yeah. 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 Well, and Marilyn, you had, I just had a quick question. You know, we all met previously to, to prepare for this meeting. <laughs> well, not all of us. <laughs> no, the, a, a few, right, a few of us. Right, right. Um, at that time, Gordon, you mentioned, um, I believe it was the paraprofessionals. Yes. Uh, where is that in your negotiations? We started negotiations with them. Um, we're not too far along. We just not too far along. <laughs> so that's so they're not part of the level services yet. That we, we have a proposal in the end. The projection. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's important. based within yeah. Okay. Because based on what you said at that meeting, sure. you know, there clearly are some specific issues that are, I believe, are critical. Absolutely. To yeah. um, mm -hmm. to our kids, and so. You're thank absolutely you. Absolutely right. Okay. They, they are right. Right. The other component I just want to add, because I'm not sure if everyone realizes it, that there's a mandate once the student preschoolers turn 2.9 years old, you won't run. have to take them. We we have to. We have to make room for them. And we so when we hear about these numbers that are 45 at the midpoint of the year, and last year they were 41, and we still know that there's another 27 that have to. The, the numbers are huge, and that the need the need is here. So, and my response to that is, I mean, these are unfunded mandates, obviously, and we're not the only ones that are experiencing that. I'm sure throughout the whole Commonwealth, we've had schools with absolutely issues. yes, and I can't believe that. Um, you know, the legislature is not taking notice. Well, even on that 14% of um, special ed out of district tuitions, we're hoping that, they're, that the legislature might come in with some kind of funding to help school districts. I mean, I always plan as your business manager for the school department, I always plan a two to 3% increase annually on those contractual services. 14%, what does that equate to? Over $400,000, that in itself for the school department. That's, Pam, that's I meant huge. To ask the other day, who, who said fourteen percent? Like who said? Well, oh, this is OS, OSD um, sets the rates, and I don't know if Mr. Smith can add right, more but... on it. OSD sets the rates, and that they work with the districts. And it, every school, um, these private schools. Um, uh, there's specialized needs that the, that the students need. So depending on what that is, they, they could be at all different places throughout the state. And OSD works on what, whatever those services are and it comes up with a, a fee. And I think because of inflation and because of loss of um, employees, I, I think there's a lot of factors there, but they came up with this 14% is, is what um, it's gonna go up. So like I said, that's over $400,000. Regardless of the program. It's just well, it's just that I so I have my projection from 
where we are right now with special ed out of district tuitions and where we're going to be next year. That's working with uh, Michael for the uh, student services director. And so we project out. And so, I mean, I anticipate $3.2 million in out of district tuitions. Uh, it, these are big numbers. And sure. yeah. Yeah. well, so I just thought it was important yeah, um, for that. Respectfully, Beth, because I really do appreciate the heartfelt explanation of those needs with those particular positions. Honestly, every single department of on the town side or over here, every school, every department, they take their responsibilities very, very seriously. And the consequences of not spending money can be dire. Uh, I told a couple of people today, we settled, the town settled a couple of cases in the last two years where we didn't have, um, because we don't have an ADA compliant building, we paid out over $100,000 to someone who worked on the wrong floor and complained and we didn't have an HR department. So that person didn't get good advice about what her rights were and it just yeah. snowballs. It's not as, it's not as significant as the child's needs, certainly. I don't even mean to compare them, but every department has those issues. I mean, if we don't fix a water main when it breaks, over the weekend, I, I had about 15 texts from Bruce Fenney on Saturday. The school, the Birchland, they're, still not, they're up and running, but not up well. Running, but no, the high school had a problem. There was a water main break. That's all overtime. Yep. You can't just say, well, we're not going to do it. I mean, <laughs> you can say we're not going to do it, but nobody would be happy. And my conclusion is, I have confidence in, in the townspeople of East Long Meadow because I think they know that the cost of living is higher now than it has been in a while. And if our budget goes up 4% and we go this way, which we won't, we'll come back this way, I think that there might be some grumbling, but I mean, Diane, told, Diane Bishop told me the other day, she only had like nine calls on uh, assessment grumblings from the most recent tax bill that went out. Nobody's happy when they get an extra two or 300 bucks, but I think some people just complain at the moment. That the knee jerk reaction is, oh, for heaven's sakes. And then you live with it. And if you want a community that values education and values streets and values Police, I mean, we've got new requirements in the police department with posts, and that's why we appointed a lieutenant to have a second in command there. We've got fire standards. Our ambulance revenue is through the roof. We have to maintain that. We have to get new trucks every so often and so forth. So the consequence of not acting or tightening the belt, which we try to do anyway, is um, perhaps more costly than spending the money when we think we need to. And Education is just, I mean, it's a political football now. It's, there are people who are going to support the school, I think, and they're, they're just going to do it. It's not going to be the difference of a million dollars or $10 million. If they want a new school and they know how important it is, they'll vote for it. And then there's probably another little basket of people that won't, no matter what. Hopefully the people in the middle can be the ones to put, you, put us over the, the finish line. Not doing it or not taking care of the other needs in the town. Um, I feel like I would be doing a disservice in my role if I didn't advocate for the things that I know are important to. Uh, I mean, we went from having no HR department. Now we have five people there and we need every single one of them. And they service the school, too. I mean, I know you have um, people dedicated to that here, but between our IT and HR and the finance office, DPW with buildings maintenance. I mean, there's an awful lot of interplay that makes our budgets kind of married to one another. And we, we can't, we have to prioritize or, or appreciate the significance of everyone's needs and then just try to balance which ones we can meet in which fiscal year. Greg. I know you have something. No, I, 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 and I agree 100% Mary with you. I just think it should be the people in this room that make that decision. And, and that's all I'm gonna say about that. Uh, the process alone, and those of us who answer to the voters and those who don't, and those who understand the picture and those who don't, and the priorities that you all have as a, as a, as a board and that we all have as a board, right? We reflect that. So it's just the pro, and it's not up to me. So I'm just, putting it out there. The other thing I wanted to bring up was the high school, if I could. Um, 
So Could before I just, we get into the high school, yeah, Marilyn yeah. had a. I know that financial oversight has been a real rub over time. Um, as a counselor, I appreciate the second tier of scrutiny that the financial oversight goes through. Um, I'm not a financial whiz kid. I try. I sit at those meetings. It's a learning opportunity for me to digest this huge budget that we're dealing with. Ralph goes through the budget line by line by line item. You heard that. Connor works, watches it on LCAT because he works. You know, we have different things going on, but we do we 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 do take part in the process, but however it suits whatever needs we have. And it's an advisory you know committee. They don't tell us what to do. I've been in some of those meetings where, you know, I've, I've said a word or two, but generally I'm there to listen to the process, to understand the rationale that they talk about when they have concerns about something or something else. You know, they're not to be feared. Um, they're talented people. We all bring gifts and talents to the table. So, you know, we have this discussion every year and I just want you to understand that it's the council that makes the decision at the end. That's good. Usually by that point, I'm ready. If I, because I've gone to the meetings, yeah. and I know what you're talking about. That's okay. Yeah. Thanks. Gordon, you have anything you'd like to add in? Uh, no, I mean, I think we've. Well, I we've, saw, it looks like multiple pages. <laughs> <laughs> I was just being prepared. Okay. Being prepared. Um, but I, I think uh, we've discussed uh, the, Sort of the challenges that we're looking at you know we're still dealing with the impact of the pandemic okay. um, the biggest areas that uh, we're looking at currently are making sure our preschool is staffed appropriately and what what is that going to look like as we continue to get referrals that we've not the level of referrals we've not seen before um, and then just making sure that we're working on how we um, withstand that 14 percent increase and uh, you know i do think that uh, both Governor Healy is going to uh, continue to support, so I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic to what her budget looks like as it comes out in March. And um, I will be on the phone to uh, Senator Oliveira and see what maybe he's thinking in terms of, uh, um, you know, are there are there funds that the legislature might be able to put towards some of these costs? I hear he's at our table. I believe. Is he? All right. Nice. Is he? Yeah. So wow. put a bug in his ear then. He also is part of the selection team that uh, selected me as principal at Ludlow High School. So we go with that. There you go. <laughs> you got history. Good, good connection. <laughs> and I do believe. You were the senior in high school at the time. But... <laughs> That's right. I'm sorry. It's a good judge of character. Thank you. You're very nice. <laughs> and I do believe uh, he's reached out to us to look to be at one of our uh, meetings coming up very shortly. Okay. So. <laughs> you think it'll be good to put a bug in his ear and sure. say, "Just find out what they're, how they're seeing this." You can cut Springfield to a hundred million and <laughs> add to the surrounding <laughs> community. Then and Ryan Ash will be at the next one or Pupolo. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to get them all into one meeting. Connor, um, since you mentioned that, would it be worth inviting the school committee to that meeting if the rep is going to be there in case they have any questions or comments <laughs> for them? I think if it's uh, okay that I, I instruct Jeannie that when we find out when it's going to be, we will uh, we will send it over to you in that way there. You know. I don't want to gang up on him, but if he gets 12 <laughs> questions, that's okay. We can send some ahead of time if you like. <laughs> <laughs> Limited to six, Gordon. Okay. <laughs> so at this time I would ask... Any counselors have any uh, input, suggestions, thoughts in the past that uh, we'd like to jump in? Mary, any additional? Um, sure. I was only going to say that Springfield, since I mentioned it earlier, got $127 million for their um, ARPA money. And what they've chosen to do with it is uh, rolled over a substantial amount from free cash to give taxpayers, residential taxpayers in Springfield a break. And there's not without debate over it, but they've used some of their ARPA money to do that. They've used free cash to do that. Many other communities did that during COVID. They took a million bucks out of free cash to 
we never did that and we hope we won't have to do it because we want to reserve our free cash although kim said sometimes in ludlow they've used free cash for well no they've used free cash for did that one capital one-time purchase for capital one time well we've done that too in an emergency not with cap no with free cash there's other opportunities there's that's why we want to keep our our reserves and the appropriate uh, parameters and now they're up around 12 million altogether and that's where we'd like to keep them that's in a good place as far as the commonwealth's industry standards so to speak are concerned but there and there's ARPA money at the commonwealth that's not yet been distributed so it, it there's a not there's a lot of opportunity i think that just needs to be uncovered or determined by the legislature where and how they're going to disperse this money the ongoing problem is we're 13 percent of the legislature out here so we're going to get the right. we're going to get the baby thimble full of any yeah. relief um but one-time expenses for things like that for that sort of fun funding right yeah but they would help i mean yeah oh yeah so seven million dollars in capital requests just alone in the schools so right we hear you so all is not totally bleak i mean we try to remain hopeful <clears throat> and optimistic that we'll meet all our goals keep the people happy and move the town forward as best we can and in our live collective happily. judgment please <laughs> live happily and live happily ever <laughs> yeah yeah and we're to help you and we're here to help do that too so um but we're in schematic design on the school project that's moving forward just for some basic things about it it'll be back there all new behind the existing building um we're talking about no fossil fuels air exchange only so it's all electric so units on the roof so no gas no oil just in our last meeting we talked about photovoltaic which seemed to spark a lot of interest which was encouraging i thought mm -hmm. um so we may put solar panels on this thing for two million dollar investment it may have a pretty quick payback on that uh costs are high we're at 750 a square foot right now you know a few years back they were looking at 20 30 percent less than that so that's a big part of the concern is that just the dollar amount on it so we're all trying to keep that number down um currently we have the three departments lcat it and central office do you have an update for us on because we need to make a, a decision on that by march uh i think april 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 may whether to keep them in and i think there's value in keeping a lot of them in. and certainly lcat has value in being this building um many of the things they the recorder here anyway uh and um right now don has a good relationship with the students and i know it'll change in terms of staffing and how we'd go about it but it may make sense to have most of lcat here anyway uh it was talking about having a help desk here anyway so it may make sense to have them here anyway depending on what's going on so that's why i'm looking for some kind of input i know you're going to talk about the other building today but maybe that's not going to happen do you have an update on that we don't have an update yet and we're still waiting for additional information which i was hoping would be in by today okay it's not. Are, will we know by march so that we can as a building committee make a i don't feel confident of having a, a, an answer with certainty with respect to the move of central office by any date certain i i'd be reluctant to offer anything at this point with certainty we're working on a lot of things yep. and it may come together in march it may come together in april it may not come together at all so that's not much guidance for so keep them in the project then is <laughs> yes. what I would consensus is we'll just keep moving forward so it lcat central yeah. office stay in the project for now yeah okay cool Anything else, school committee? Uh, Sarah, anything from uh, from afar? Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's getting there. <laughs> uh, no, I just think that, you know, this is, I think, the fifth budget season that I've been a part of. And I think this is both um, the largest group that's convened for the original um, conversation and the initial meeting, and also one of the longest and I think most collaborative conversations I've listened in on and been a part of. So I think. Again, the more often we meet and the more often we exchange ideas that focus on the betterment of the town as a whole, then we all start to recognize what the priorities are and find ways to ensure that they are fulfilled. I think what Beth mentioned about the needs at the preschool level 
are are sincere. And I think, um, Mary, you've been a staunch advocate of the high school. I've seen the quotes in the reminder. And I think tonight, again, you, you made it very clear that yes, the high school is a priority, but the entirety of the town is also a priority. And balancing the needs so that everything within East La Meadow moves forward, but in a way that is respectful of the taxpayers. And I think that the more we meet and the more often we have these conversations, the more solidified we become as, as two governing bodies really moving forward with the best interests of the town in mind. So I'm thrilled that this conversation was both in size in terms of the length of the conversation, but also in terms of the members and the representation at the table. So I think it will lead to good things for the town. Thank you, Sarah. That was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was great. <laughs> I think we're all set as a committee. If, uh, if you want to adjourn and help oh, Connor Hale for one suggestion. Absolutely. Um, since I think this was also good for all of us to get together, perhaps rather than it just being a once at the kickoff, could we perhaps do this as we get a few more final numbers as the budget process continues instead of just it being a sticker shock at the end of the deal? <laughs> I would be more than willing, like I said, as it comes closer um, to extend the invitation. Um, sometimes it is difficult to get all these people together at once, but absolutely. I mean, they wouldn't come on Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Valentine's you for that accommodation, by the way. But we're happy to come anytime. Certainly, you know, anything that you find important, we're, we're, uh, we'll be there. And thank you for coming here and letting us host. Uh, this was nice uh, to host tonight. So thank you all for showing up here. So I'd entertain a motion to adjourn the school committee. Still moved. Motion made by Antonella. And second. And second by Beth. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. That carries five to zero. We are adjourned. Thank you. I move to four to zero. Four to zero. Four to zero. Okay. Motion made and seconded. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are adjourned. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>